All right. Am I on? Can you guys hear me? Cool. So thank you for joining us after lunch on the, the third day of build. We weren't sure how our slot would fare. I'm happy to see so many people are interested to hear about uh, what we've done with tiles and toasts. Uh, my name is Matt Heidinger. I'm here with Lay, and we are program managers on the notification platform. So you saw our esteemed manager and colleague present on the Cloud Action Center stuff yesterday, which was really cool. Um, we're not going to cover any of that. Uh, it was very exciting stuff, so you know, check that out. But today we're going to talk about the notification platform and just tiles and, and toasts and kind of what we have to introduce. So some things we've heard from last year. Oh, I've got I to animate that in. We heard Hipster Geek Unicycle was out, and March Madness is in. We heard a couple of things. Uh, tiles tease me, but don't always deliver. We heard a lot of people ask for more flexible Toast notifications. Tiles could do quite a bit. Toast, not so much. So we wanted to address that. We heard make the PC Action Center more useful. It was a pretty big hit on mobile platforms. The PC one didn't get used quite as much. So we thought we could do more. And overall, just a more powerful and kind of universal uh, notification platform. Let's make it truly universal, give some stuff to let you guys innovate on things we, we didn't even think of. So to start with live tiles, uh, live tiles obviously are kind of a, a staple and iconic appearance uh, in Windows. Um, this is obviously what many people's start screens look like. Uh, the phone clear, clearly popularized it. Um, with Windows 10, we introduced the adaptive toast notification layout to let you kind of do some complex layout. We didn't want everyone to have to drop out to XAML, render a bitmap to do the things they wanted to do on tiles. So we're going to kind of show some of that. Um, but as the quick recap, and there's not very, very little recap in this talk, uh, but just kind of start out just to level set on people who might, might be new to the, the notification space. Um, adaptive notifications had a, had a goal that they're consistent yet powerful. So if you have a text-heavy tile, Great, we give you all the built-in text styles of the, the universal platform. Uh, you can override the branding, so kind of customize some of those areas, like your logos, you know, text messaging could do, did the little winky face forever ago when you had a text. Uh, you can do relatively complex layouts, such as these columns and, you know, inline images. This is not a XAML rendered thing. This is just our adaptive payload, which we'll show a little bit. Some background images, inline images, columns, uh, all these were built uh, with adaptive. Again, hopefully the goal being let you design your tile how you want, but you don't necessarily get to break out and, and align margins necessarily or like override the text brandings, because there is a still desire to keep it consistent within the rest of uh, the start screen. So with that, uh, I want to demo a tool that many of you have probably seen by now, but if you haven't, it's, on the, it's in the store, so it's a UWP called the Notifications Visualizer. Um, it's an incredible tool for kind of rapidly prototyping what you want your notifications to look like, mostly used for tiles today. So when you come in here, this is what a tile payload looks like. You have your bindings for the sizes, so small, medium, wide, and large, and you define your content. So we have a bunch of pre-populated pre payloads that you can look. So here's what a calendar would look like, and you can see it kind of previewed in uh, in these various uh, sizes, I can say pin to start. I head down here, and you know, let me uh, resize my start screen, realign that. Come on, baby. So there's the wide tile, hang on, it'll come in. This is a very early build of Windows, but it should eventually animate in. There it goes. So that's kind of the wide tile, obviously showing exactly rep represented what you saw in the visualizer, which is cool, and you can resize it to large to kind of lay it out. It's very important that every tile payload you send contains every size, because the user can clearly resize it, resize it at will. So every tile notification you send supports all of them. There's some really neat stuff in here. I, I won't dig into uh, all of it, because again, this is just recap. This is in 10 today. We have great samples on MSDN that cover a lot of it. But there's some kind of cool things that I wanted to cover, and that's groups and subgroups. So we wanted a way to semantically group your text together. So to get an idea why you would want to do that, I'll head over to the mobile view. And our mobile devices have a variety of screen densities. 
So when you're on a low density screen, if you actually look at this medium tile, I have a group here that contains one email from Jennifer Parker, and I have another group which contains uh, an email from, from Steve Bosniak. But it's not showing up on this tile. As I simulate scrolling the density deeper, you'll see this is basically simulating a more higher density device. That second email just shows up. That's still a medium tile on a higher density screen, which shows more content. So the nice thing is you send this notification to every Windows device out there, regardless of screen density, as long as they're on Windows 10, and we'll show the right thing. We won't, the whole point of grouping it is so you don't get like one line of text on that uh, other email. So some cool stuff in Adaptive, we, we were really excited. Um, I know everyone wants XAML tiles. Uh, I am not here today to announce that, but since Adaptive came out, we are pretty happy with, with the responses we've gotten. Uh, if you again pop through these payloads, you'll see our weather tile. Uh, you know, just some samples that are in here just that kind of show what, what you can do uh, with, with just random payloads. So that's the visualizer. That's what we had for tiles in 10. And now I want to talk about something new. So the first new thing we're going to get to see. Uh, this slide was a little funnier before the lawyers got to it. Uh, we couldn't use what we wanted to use. But anyway, it's a tile with legs. We thought that was a cool feature. Uh, obviously, no, we're, we're going to talk about, so Chaseable Live Tiles this is the first new feature I want to show you, and that is another demo. Head right back over here. I will pop into my super secret VM because this is all very early stuff. So what I've got in start, come on start, come on start, you're down there. These demos uh, go well about a third of the time. We might have to come back to this one. Oh, oh okay, Cortana's in there. Search. Starts in there, yay. All right, here's the scenario. Look at that tile. It's showing me stories. Oh, something about phoning it in, one to many. Some of these things might be kind of intriguing. I click on it. Let me actually show you what that looks like with the magic off. With the magic off, I see the story, and there's something on there, the quest for a quantum future. What? Where is the quest for a quantum future? Why can I not see what was just on the tile? Let's solve it, let's turn the magic on. Close the app, wait for it to rotate one time. It's just cycling through a handful of stories that we have. Come on, rotate, baby. Man that matters, click on it. Oh my, it's the first thing in there. We watch for one more thing, let's rotate. Cortana's world, the app's still running. Click on it and it shows the first thing. It's incredibly simple, but finally the tile that teased you with something has a way to get into it in the app. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, we thought, we thought that would be a nice thing to address in 2016. So it's incredibly simple. You, sh you, saw the, you saw the tile payload. The way this tile payload gets invoked, we add a simple arguments attribute at either the visual level or you can even customize on the binding. Just like Toast have always had arguments, now tiles have arguments. And in your on launched, you just check the tile activated information that has a property called recently shown notifications. And we show you, and it, it's nice because it's actually what Start showed you. So even though you have five tiles in your queue cycling, we keep it up to date with what Start has actually decided to show you. So whatever the user saw, when they launch your app, your app will get it. Very excited about it. We think it's super simple. So to change gears a little bit, I want to have uh, Lay over here talk about some of the cool new things we're doing in Toast. Whew. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> Oh, I almost like collapsed myself like when the start actually launched. <laughs> Very nervous. <laughs> so I'll shift gears and talk about uh, what's, the, what's in the world of uh, Toast Notification and Action Center. So let's start that with uh, a quick recap on the journey we had in Action Center. So back in Windows Phone 8.1, we shipped Action Center, which is a place that centralized all your missed notifications inside a place uh, for the user on mobile. And you guys liked it, and users liked it. So in Windows 10 last year, 
we made the same action center available on desktop as well. And as of last uh, November, with Windows 10 update coming to Xbox, we made the same action center available on Xbox as well. So I know that notification experience, being consistent, having the same look and feel is important for all your app experiences. So we made sure that action center, the look, the UI, and the interaction model has a level of consistency across all Windows devices. So what else was introduced last year? We introduced interactive Toast notifications. How many folks in the audience know or have used interactive Toast notifications? Please raise your hand. <laughs> OK, I see a lot of you, actually. I was going to say there's a lot of you, but I actually see a lot of you. This is awesome. Uh, <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, I know. It's a, it's a big, wide, weird stage here. So I can actually like, point to one direction and say, oh, there's a bunch of folks over there raise, <laughs> raise their hand. But you all actually raise your hand. That's awesome. So what's so good about it? For folks that you don't know uh, Interactive Toast, what it does is to allow you to provide a custom action inside notifications, or even inputs inside notifications, that allows user to complete tasks, to do more things, without being switched away from what they're doing right now. If I receive an SMS with quick reply, all I have to do is to type in my re response, click on send, and then that notification will go back and carry my response back to the SMS app. And I can carry on whatever I was doing before, whether that being watching a video or editing a photo. This results in less distraction to the user and also less context switching. But in fact, this makes your app more engaging. Our telemetry shows that an interactive toast are acted upon 10 times more than standard toasts. Here are just some examples of how apps are currently using interactive toast notifications inside the existing Windows platform. So here's the missed call information that Cortana pops up that shows up on your PC that actually tells you missed call information on your phone. You can choose to ignore it or text reply it directly inside the toast. And this next one is from an app called Readit, which is a great client of Reddit that allow you to use an interactive toast to directly reply to a message or just mark it as read. And of course, our inbox messaging app uses quick reply for SMS as well. And actually, another piece of uh, interesting data we have is two out of three text messages in Windows devices are now replied through interactive toast. The last one here is also my favorite one. It's an app called True Caller. It's a call filtering app that when it shows a missed call notification, it allows you to not only call back, but also mark a caller as spam if you want to, only if you want to. <laughs> so in addition to interactive toast notification, in Windows 10 last year, we also shipped a version of Adaptive Toast. It's a rather simple version. So what we allow you to do is to add several lines of text, an optional image that replaces the application logo, and an optional image that shows up in line. The notification is truly adaptive to all Windows devices, but it's rather simple. It doesn't have all those very enhanced and rich visual flexibility that Tao has right now. So you guys have asked, why is that the case? Why can't we do better? So that's exactly what we did in the upcoming anniversary update. I'm introducing the new iteration of adaptive Toast notification that has all the enhanced features that Tao has right now, including groups, subgroups, and different text styles. But wait. Thank you. <laughs> Let's see it. Let's see it. And uh, I mean, I'm inviting Matt back to the stage. It's a very small stage. It's weird to say that you're inviting here him back time. to the stage. Yeah, he's here the whole time. <laughs> uh, I mean, unlike Matt, it's my first time at a build session. I'm really nervous, so I'm going to let <laughs> Matt touch everything to do with coding, <laughs> just to be safe. So 
Matt has this awesome weather tile that actually use a pretty comprehensive set of features we have inside adaptive toast, uh, adaptive tile, which has using subgroups to create different columns and also using several different text styles. Well, Matt, we all know, is a very lazy, I mean, uh, efficient developer. <laughs> so uh, They're both right. he loves to use, utilize the code he has as much as possible. I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> so he's going to copy the tile, large tile binding from within the tile payload into a blank toast payload. Well, as you can see, that stuff is not complete yet. Tile's going to modify several things to make it work. Well, first, he's going to uh, remove a bunch of uh, different uh, uh, I mean, attributes that, that, that are not applicable to toast notifications. And then he's going to add base URI to point us to the right images. And uh, that's all you have to do. Should we show them? And now, exactly, yeah, please pop the toast, Matt, and uh, finish up the magic. The toast notification now ah. works on this build we have, regardless of how stable, that, <laughs> how, how stable <laughs> that build was right now. And if you open up Action Center, you see that the same notification getting expanded shows up inside Action Center. You want me to fix that new notification right there? Please, the okay. only one piece of guidance that we want to give developers is that that's different from Tile. Toast actually has the concept of being collapsed inside Action Center. So that we recommend developers to always add a text line, at least one text line, in front of uh, your adaptive Toast in case if you're dealing with a bunch of groups and subgroups, just to make sure when that notification is collapsed inside Action Center, people still see a good summary of what that notification is. And that, that leads to the user to chase into the Tile or to expand it to see more details. Cool stuff. What do you think about that? <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. I'm glad you like it. So now let's switch back to the slides and uh, continue on the new stuff that we have for Toast and Action Center. Well, yeah, the clip art actually works really well here. <laughs> it, is, it really is a cup of tea, hopefully, for you guys to use Adaptive Toast. Well, in addition to Adaptive Toast notifications, we also made several UI changes, as well as added some new features to make your Toast notifications look better in general and becomes more engaging. Let's start with the free things that doesn't require any app code change. Well, first of all, we're making the images larger inside notification content, whether it's an inline image or if it's an application, over, application logo overwrite image, so that you can see the, con the user can see the content more clearly. And also, we've heard feedback that if developers choose to use app logo override to replace the application logo, sometimes when the notification pops, it's very hard to tell which source app this notification is coming from. We want to give users enough confidence and make them feel predictable when they're clicking on a toast to know which app is about to launch. So we added the fact that if you're using app logo override, then we always display the application, the application name at the bottom of the notification so people know which notification this is coming from. I will also fix our button style so that if you provide an image URI inside an action, it'll show up at the top instead of the front. In this way, you get a little bit more visual uh, real estate for the text on the buttons, and also this aligns better with the rest of the OS. And we're improving the discoverability for not only the Action Center itself, but also new items inside Action Center as well. So here's the little video I'm about to show you. As you can see here, oh, yeah. the entry point of Action Center now is moved to the bottom right corner of the, of the task bar. And can Matt, please hit play. As you can see, when a new notification comes in, we're actually going to start showing you a batch number of how many notifications you have, you have not seen since last time you launched Action Center. Yep. It's kind of Sweet. playing at like half speed. Oh, yeah, that's weird. <laughs> I'm not sure why. 
which is actually good because I'm explaining what's coming up, <laughs> which is you can see that if you send a ghost host, you're which silently bottom, goes right? inside Action Center, then your application icon will just quickly flash on top of that notification center icon. Gives user a subtle hint about what notification has just gone into your Action Center. Hopefully in this way, it encourages user to go into Action Center more to chase what they've missed since last time they checked it. And at the very last, we also want to make sure that user feels that Action Center is always current and relevant, only displays the most fresh information. So here's what the Action Center looks like in the new anniversary update. As you can see, previously, we have up to 20 notifications per app inside Action Center. If you have notification-heavy apps, it takes very long time for you to scroll over inside Action Center to see what notifications you've missed from each app. So now, we've reduced this number to three. However, you can still always click on See More to unveil the rest of the notifications from that app. Well, here also, we're kind of introducing a little bit of spoiler here. If you're looking carefully, at the bottom right corner, there's notification coming from web.skype.com and it sent you through Microsoft Edge browser. In the upcoming anniversary update, Windows Edge browser is going to support web notifications using standard W3C web APIs. <laughs> Thank you. This is not something our, our team should, but we're really proud of it. <laughs> so here, what I'm going to give you is a session pointer to the web platform session, if you want to find more about that. More code? Yes, please. All right. So actually, in, now I've showed you all the stuff that's, uh, that comes in for free. We're going to show you a demo of those things that doesn't really come in for free. They're very simple to implement, but depending on your scenario, could be really useful for your individual apps. So Matt is going to start with a restaurant recommendation notification that he's been working on. From it's Pho Delicious. It's from Pho Delicious, of course, yeah. All the places that serve Pho always have a pun in their name. <laughs> and uh, well, this is a pretty sweet notification. It shows an inline image that shows a map view. It also shows several actions. So what Matt wants to do is, isn't it would be nice, doesn't, is, isn't it gonna be nice if he can show a favorite dish, a recommended dish, in a very visually impactful, impactful way inside that notification. So all Matt has to do is to add an image and put placement equals hero, which is a new feature we're adding, that you can put a hero image inside notification. If you pop that toast. You want to do the other stuff? Sure, let's do okay. the other stuff first. While well, Matt also actually just realized that, <laughs> This image is coming from a different source that's outside of his app content. So it's adding the attribution text that shows up where that source is from. And once you, place, once you specify that placement is attribution, we'll always make sure that this attribution shows up inside your notification, whether your notification is collapsed or expanded. And um, there's one more thing. So, this one more thing is to add action inside Toast Notification Context Menu. Toast, so what is Toast Notification Context Menu and how do a user see it? Toast Notification Context Menu is the thing that shows up. Matt, if you can go to uh, Action Center real quick. Do you want me to pop it? No? Uh, uh, let's not pop it right now yet. Okay. And uh, oh, actually, yeah, we have to, we have to pop okay. it. Let's pop it. Because there's nothing in there. If it, goes inside contact, uh, if it goes inside Action Center, if you right click on the notification or click on that cog right there, you can see there are several items that get unveiled. The last two items in there previously already exist in Windows Platform. They're system options. They allow you to manage the notification, but in the, at the system level. You can turn off notification for the app or just go to notification settings, but the setting inside OS. However, we know that almost every single app has their own application setting about managing notifications inside their app for a variety of good reasons. For example, if Outlook Mail 
wants you to manage notifications on a per email account basis. If I want to turn on my Hotmail account email, uh, notifications, but I want to turn off my Gmail notifications, then the system doesn't really have any knowledge to provide you that level of granularity when managing notifications. So we really want to give apps the option to add their own link into their app setting right from within the action center. So that's what a context menu action give you. Cool? And uh, of course, action center, mm -hmm. uh, the context menu action is like a tertiary level action. You don't really have to use it for application setting. You can use it for anything else you want. But keep in mind that uh, if you use it, it's gotta be for something that you don't want the user to see immediately. The user has to take that extra step to see that action inside context menu. So if we quickly recap on the things that almost require no code change, only require a little bit of code change, but give you uh, some good feature, useful features, depending on your scenario. We have hero image, which is a new image placement. And here's just how, showing how it looks like on a mobile device. We have attribution, which is a placement to provide attribution for your notification in texts. And we have context menu, a tertiary level action that only displays in notification context menu. So what do you think about all that? Action center's looking good. Now I'm gonna give the stage back to Matt. He's going to talk about several tools that we introduced to make the notification development story much easier. So yeah, let's, uh, let's hop into Visual Studio for a little bit. Um, the first thing I wanna show you is, well there's two things, notifications extensions and uh, this new feature that we're kind of introducing as part of extensions called Notification Mate. So I learned earlier on in my Microsoft career that the best way to get ahead is to poke fun at not your boss, but your boss's boss. So I wrote this app featuring Andrew Clinic, who was taken a picture of that apparently looked like Confession Bear, and it has become a, a huge meme around the office. So I wanted to make clinic quotes and kind of show an app that just pops random, semi-humorous uh, quotes. So how would I do that? Here's my simple app. It does nothing right now except for has a few random strings in it. Here's how you would normally pop a toast in a regular app. You would potentially write it as a string. Our, our APIs currently, you know, are the Jar Jar Binks of APIs, and I promised someone I would get a Jar Jar joke in. Uh, but they require you to use an XML document. It's something we're hoping to address, but we're kind of taking some steps towards that right now. So you could, you could do this. You could write your toast as, an X, as, as a string. You, you know, it got a little better in C-sharp 6 with the string interpolation syntax, so at least you, know, you don't have to do like, you know, it, it's a little better. But you don't get IntelliSense. You don't know what, in, what features are, are in the XML. Uh, you new up an XML document, say load XML, and then you pop, uh, pop the toast. That'll work, cool, it's fine. But to do a little better, let's get rid of that. And what I have in my project is a reference to the notifications extensions. These have been around forever, since like Windows 8 came out, uh, and we had a template catalog that we've clearly gone a long way since that, if you remember that. Um, but the notifications extensions are just an object model over the XML that you can construct an object and then finally turn it into XML. So actually, let me, sorry, I deleted too much code. Just don't need that stuff. Drag in my toast content. So with those extensions, now I have these toast content. I can create the visual. You'll notice it looks a lot like the XML. It's just you, you new up toast content, you give it a toast visual, you give it some text, and then all I have to do is say toast.getXML. And again, this has been around. This is good. We can pop a toast. Run that real quick. Come on, Surface Book, you got this. Cool. I put a delay in the splash screen just so I could show off that logo a little longer. So let me hear a clinic quote. You guys might have seen this. Cool. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have a British accent. It comes off a little better that way. But I had my first date last night. It's a seriously underrated fruit. And you can picture him saying that. 
So let's clear that out of there. Okay, cool, I have toast. Now, you know, we love live tiles. We think you should use live tiles to drive engagement. We know that live tiles that have live content are actually clicked on 60% more often than when they do not have live content. So what we're gonna do is drag in a tile content object so you don't have to make me watch it. So this again, you saw it's, there's a fair amount of XML in, in the adaptive payloads. It's, it's, it's basically just finding all those four tile sizes. It's, it's, you know, there's a lot of stuff in there. It doesn't take a lot of time. But now I can build up this object. Again, it's just building it up in XML. I can new up my tile updater, create a tile notification based on that XML, and then now I have a tile and a toast with the same thing. Again, that's okay, but I really think we can do better because I really want my app to keep them in sync. Once I've seen a clinic quote, I want it to go away. So rather than do all this, I'm gonna delete this. Just pop the toast. And I'm gonna use a new feature in notifications extensions called Notification Mate. And I'm gonna say sync my tile with Action Center. Don't have to do anything more than that in this case. Actually, sorry, there's one other thing I have to do that is so much easier that you don't have to do it. Uh, in Windows 10, we introduced the Toast Notification History Change Trigger. So it's a trigger that fires anytime your Action Center changes. So when a Toast pops, Wake up a background task, and you can do whatever you want in there. When a user swipes away a toast, your trigger wakes up, and you can do whatever you want. So you can manually sync up your tile with what's in your action center. I realized, cool, I can automate a lot of that code, and that's exactly what this does, sync tile with action center. So the only other thing I have to do is go in my app.xaml, where here, I, that splash screen is hot, so I put a, a sleep in there, so the splash screen stays up for two seconds longer. So I'm gonna register this background task. Request access async. When you have the notifications extensions, you're just gonna say notification made background task dot register. So I abstract all the whole, the task registration from you. You just write this single line of code. And now let's F5. So all we've really added is this line of code here, register background task and sync with action center. And if all goes well, we look at our splash for a second. You can see here's the tile right here. Let me hear a clinic quote. We saw the had my first date. I'm gonna pop one more, we'll swipe that guy away, pop one more. I don't think I'll ever find a stable job. I'm just not that comfortable around horses. So two toasts are in here. Let me take a look at that live tile. Badge says two, and then give it a second because this particular start screen on this build is a little slow. And you can see it showing, I don't know where that padding came from, that is a visual glitch, but it will actually cycle through what's in Action Center. So I'll show the second one. And what I wanna do is watch it kind of live. So there's the, the two of them, I had my first date. So let's get rid of the had my first date, swipe that one away. You'll see the badge update to one, it does take a second. Badge updates to one, tile is synced in. I'm gonna clear the other one. And the tile reverts back to its normal state. We think, so this is, this exists today. This, this with, with notifications extensions, you can just drop this in. This doesn't require any new platform features. It's just taking advantage of some stuff that, hey, there's a lot of apps out there that just want their tile and toast to be the same thing, especially with the badge count. It's just an automatic count. So what I think is kind of cool, my first time actually getting to do this, I'm gonna head over to the notifications extensions because I don't think I should be the only one to have this. I'm going to commit hello build 16. Here's the first beta of notification mate. Going to commit it and sync it to our local, our GitHub repository that contains the notifications extensions. I got to publish source finally at build. Can go, thank you. We'll go, we'll go one better and generate the NuGet packages. We're gonna go 10586, it's the build number of this Windows build, 0 0.3, and we're gonna call it a beta. Generate those packages, awesome. This is my new pack. Copy this guy, and I am, oh, that is pretty. We're gonna take this file I just generated here, and I'm going to upload, oh! <laughs> Woo, that. <laughs> Did it go? Yeah, okay. It <laughs> okay, 
So if you want to play with this, we really would love for you to check it out. Um, I, I have tested a little bit. In fact, if you were at uh, my boss's boss demo two days ago, it did fail. So I have found some slight glitches in it. It's a little hard to kind of keep them in sync with timing issues. Uh, I'd love if you check it out, use it. In NuGet, you just have to say uh, include pre-release packages. Add it to your project, just drop in notification mate. I'd, I'd love if you could uh, um, test it out. Oh, I wanted to show actually one other quick thing. Uh, hoping my, uh, this one's actually pretty cool. So I'm gonna delete all the code and just do a, a push channel. This I like the most, in fact. So all I'm doing is getting a push channel like you normally would uh, so the, the button doesn't do anything except for write this you push URI. We're gonna grab that. And we built this little push test app. All it's gonna do is send a push, push payload of this. So if you use push, we wanna say you are fully supported. You can see I'm not doing anything. That background task, so let's send this push. Hopefully that guy comes through. Cool, push notifications are fancy pants. Oh, another little thing. Badges in the taskbar, pretty cool. We're really happy to have those. So you can see that badge there. And then now in the tile, boom. If you use push, all you needed was that background task. Just register your notification mate background task. It'll keep everything in sync for you. Cool, and I got to publish it. So please check that out. We're having, we're having good luck so far. Wow, okay, and the project my screen opened. I'm gonna completely change gears and introduce yet another something new. Don't look at my pin. This is my, oh, yeah. So I am trying to copy Justin Timberlake's hair in that, in that picture if you saw my photos flip through. So uh, I wanna show a brand new app that I've been working on that I, again, plan to publish the source, but it's called Hue and Me. So this app uh, lets me basically define uh, an inner circle of people that are important to me. So I'm gonna click add, I'm gonna add uh, Adam Wilson, a colleague in the back. I'm going to add, probably should add my girlfriend to my inner circle. And of course, my favorite demo mate in the world, adding lay to my inner circle. So I've defined three people that are important to me. Gonna go back to start. I'm going to curl up with my favorite book, The MS Dev Show. And now imagine I'm just kind of in my house, dropping cards, and Lay's gonna send me a text, I think. So I'm reading my, my book, hoping not to get distracted. And Lay, oh, you're actually sending me a Facebook, a Facebook message. Oh, wow, my, my bat signal has alerted me that I should go check, that I should go check my phone for a message from Lay. Okay, I got it, let's swipe that away. Oh, my bat signal has, has turned off. So what did that just do? This is something we're pretty excited, and oh, we don't need clinic quotes right now. This is something we're pretty excited to show. So what just happened was we, ha we have this new API we're introducing, the notification listener. And what that API does is you declare a capability that says I wanna be a notification listener. Then you have to request access to it. So here, the namespace, I'll scroll up a little bit. So we had windows.ui.notifications. We now have a dot management namespace in there. And in there is the user notification listener. So once I request access, the user would get prompted. Obviously I did that before the demo was run. The user gets prompted, hey, this app would like access to your notifications. Essentially plugging into the notification pipeline to know when a notification gets sent and when it gets removed. So once I've been allowed access, I simply subscribe to those changes. I register my background task. It has a trigger called a user notification change trigger. And in this case, I'm only interested in toast notifications. We have aspirations, it's not going to be in this release, but tile notifications, badge notifications, any type of notification that flows through our pipeline, we want apps to be able to build on that pipeline, do innovative stuff. Obviously, my bat signal is, uh, is, is one example of that. It's basically just saying, hey, a notification came in, and I can do anything I want in that background task. So it's a pretty simple API. I can just get the list of notifications async if I just want to know what's in there. But if you look at the background task, that's actually where the interesting things are. So 
I'm essentially, my background task is firing again, it's on the change trigger, so it wakes up any time a, a notification comes in. Uh, we have, I'm not gonna go into this since we are a little low on time, but uh, effectively I wrote this notification change processor, this is just part of my project, um, but essentially every time your background task wakes up, it's a very simple model and it's just a shoulder tap. So you just get all the notifications. So I need some way to kind of know that, hey, I've already processed that one because every time you wake up, you'll get notifications and you have them all. So this simple thing is basically gonna say, hey, on a new notification, handle it. And when a notification is swiped away, handle that. And all my app does, you can see what I can get from, from the object. I get the notification. You've seen the bindings, so the toast generic binding. So I'm saying notification.visual.getBinding, and I'm pulling out that, that binding, essentially what, essentially what the developer put in the XML. And then from there I'm saying just give me the text elements. So in my app, all I'm really doing is saying, hey, every notification that comes in, I'm looking for the words of my inner circle. So if Lay sent me a Facebook message that has his name, the light blinks. If he sent me a text message, the light blinks, or a WhatsApp. It's just looking for all the notifications for a, a specific text, in my app's case. And then of course, when a notification is removed, I tell my Hue controller to stop the light. So we're pretty excited about it. We think it enables a whole host of scenarios, especially when you think of uh, accessories, so you know, smart watches and things. It's a way of getting notifications onto other devices or onto lights. We think you can do some kind of cool analytic stuff with it, like what are the common words that are in all my notifications? Just some kind of neat stuff that I can visualize. Um, hopefully you guys, hope this uh, is useful. Uh, we, we, we had to fight pretty hard to make it a generic capability so that everyone can use it with permissions. We're, we're glad that you don't have to email the store and get special access. So um, pretty excited about it. Glad the demo worked. Hope you guys like the, the notification listener. All right, so Lay, uh, bring us home. Thank you. I can't deny I'm a little bit jealous of the bat signal, even though I'm not quite sure which bat signal would ever blink pink. Oh, they all do. I only work with black or very dark gray, <laughs> you know. Yeah. It's a Lego movie uh, quote, if you guys watch that movie. Uh, <laughs> so before I move on, I can't, uh, I can't believe I forgot this, to mention this to everyone. The notification visualizer, the new version of notification visualizer that works for all the new uh, features we've added, including adaptive toast and all those different features we've introduced like hero image, attribution, context menu, will be published today. And now let's switch gears and talk about something else. It's a new concept, multi-user aware notifications for Xbox. So folks in the audience, please raise your hand if you develop your app for Xbox as well. Cool. And awesome, yeah, there's quite a few of you guys. So we all know that Xbox is a great gaming console. We also know that to some of you guys in the audience, it's equally important to mobile and uh, desktop as a product to as a product SKU where you run your app inside. And uh, it's also a very special product SKU inside the Windows device family. It's the only one that currently allows multiple different users log in simultaneously and be active users all on the same machine. So apps running on Xbox can be a multi-user aware app, or what we call a MUA app, that knows all the information about different users on this machine and do different things by targeting different users. So what does that have to do with notifications? Imagine a very common scenario where it's both, both me and my wife are logged in into the same Xbox machine. She's a huge Halo fan. So she plays Halo all the time. But when a Skype message of mine comes in while she's playing, she's the current user that's playing Halo in the foreground, this notification first, it should show up. And also, it should have some visual hint that tells the machine, that tells every user, this is a notification for Lay. And of course, when anyone taps on that notification, the correct user context should be given when the app launches so that the, same, the correct conversation of mine should launch and the Skype app should launch. So all that requires the Skype app code be able to know different users and do notification things to different users. 
So we're happy to announce that in the upcoming anniversary update, we're going to ship a set of multi-user aware notification APIs. They allow you to do notification things to a user or for a user on an Xbox device if you are a MUA app. Well, that includes very basic notification things like, like registration push channel, sending different types of notifications via push, creating or even handling activations for toast notifications, and of course, uh, live, live tile and badge updates locally. So how does that really work? It's actually really simple. And it is the same pattern that's shared across the namespace or even across the system for all MUA apps. You see that we're introducing this new static method called get for user. All you have to do is to pass in the user you want to target, which you get from a separate API uh, when you choose to decide to be a MUA app. And then all you have to do is to call whatever existing API then inside the notification namespace. In this very case, we're using creating a push channel as an example. Push notification, create push notification channel for application async. And after you've done that, that's all you have to do. You will get a channel specifically for that user, and from then, you can push notification straight to that user. So activation from MUA uh, toast notification is something you want to be mindful about. It supports foreground and background activation, just like it does in the standard app, in a, in a normal uh, universal, universal uh, Windows app. However, when the notification gets launched, it will launch with the correct user context that the toast was originally intended for, which means if I construct a notification to target user A, then when that notification is clicked, user A will always be the correct user context getting launched with. So if user B click on the same, user, user, uh, uh, the same notification that was constructed for user A, then the notification will launch the app with the correct user context of user A. If you want to find out more about building a good EWP app for Xbox, please go see the recorded session here. Is that it, Lay? That's almost it. We're almost there. Yeah? So there's just one last thing. You know, we're all, I mean, we're all pretty active with the one last thing style. This is one last thing I want to mention before we wrap it up. It's Project Centennial. So we're supporting Toast notifications in a modern desktop app. How many of you guys have seen uh, the Project Centennial in Keynote or have gone to the session? Great. That's most of you guys. So it's a great way for you to uh, reutilize your existing Win32 app code. And uh, if you haven't seen the session, here's the session code. You can feel free to catch up later. A great benefit you get by making your old 132 code apps into a modern desktop app is then you can incrementally integrate with all the awesome features that we provide to you with UWP application APIs. And a great example of that is Toast Notifications. With a desktop modern app, you can publish a Toast using WinRT APIs just like you do with the standard UWP app. And also, you can handle activations using protocol by supporting your custom URI schema. And uh, more story about Toast activation and application activation in general for modern desktop app will be coming in the future. So in the very end, let's just show you that a working Centennial demo I pre-opened start for you. Okay. Thank you, yes, because <laughs> yeah. it is very nervous every time we keep, <laughs> click on that. And let me look for, oh, actually, you know what? Oh boy. I'm less nervous this time because it's actually not in my VM. Oh. So here we go. It's a demo app that I built completely using uh, WPF. So I can show you the project here. I'm surprised you project. went with WPF when Andrew went all the way back to VB6, if you guys saw that. He had a... Where's the project? 
Mm -hmm. There's a WPF application? Oh, yeah, it's right here. <laughs> it's hard to see stuff on stage. I know. Wow. <laughs> here we go. As you can see, this is just a normal WPF app. And after I run through the project Centennial Converter, it now shows up as an app, as a modern app inside the app list. When I click on it, it just launches the app. It does a very simple thing, greet me, hello, lay, but also I can directly call WinRT API to pop a toast. It shows up like that. And different activation type works, including the system activation for me to snooze a notification. Just go ahead and snooze that one to remind me later, because 10 minutes later, I'll be off the stage, running to the theater, watch this movie. <laughs> Cool. Popping toast. Oh, man. We, uh, we got through every demo. You guys uh, don't know how intense that was uh, running up to this. So uh, I want to kind of close up and maybe open the floor to some sessions. Uh, some key takeaways. Uh, you know, we're pretty happy with this release. We, we know tile traceability was a big request when you see something there. Uh, very happy, happy to deliver that. Um, Toast, having everything that tiles have is a big win. They can get super flexible, including some, some additional stuff like hero images. Um, making the PC Action Center more useful, uh, that was really about the, the Cloud Action Center that we, we announced yesterday. Um, you know, it's really nice when your phone is in your pocket and you're on your PC. If you're like me and you're just kind of a, an information worker or just hanging out somewhere, it's really nice to be able on the most powerful machine to, to quickly reply. Uh, obviously, so this is a session to that. Uh, if you happen to miss it, um, notification futures, they, they cover a lot of stuff that the platform as a whole is, is, is enabling including some developer APIs for that stuff. And lastly, we just kind of thought we'd throw in the notification listener, some MUA notifications for Xbox apps. We're very excited to, for Xbox apps to start showing up uh, in the summer. And toasting from a modern desktop app. We, we, again, we, we've heard a lot, but we love all of your code, uh, even your VB6 code. And you know, it's nice to be able to use a lot of these uh, features like toasts and tiles and really the notification stack uh, regardless of what your, your code base might be. So please complete an evaluation form. Um, I don't know if they asked how did the demos go, but <laughs> we're, we're glad that, that they happen to go through. Uh, they are important. Uh, please, please evaluate those. Uh, if you take a picture of that uh, QR code, we appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I guess if uh, anyone has time for questions, or we have time for questions, if you want to actually head over to the, the microphones, I'd, I'd appreciate it. Hello. Uh, so there was rumors of interactive tiles. There were. There were. Who, who wrote those rumors? Yeah. Yeah, in fact, I, I talked to my dear friend Tom of some unknown place uh, earlier yesterday and told him that, no, there are no interactive tiles. Um, that was just some of the stuff, like badges on taskbar and some of the other stuff we were doing. All we said is there's cool stuff to see. <laughs> Uh, we, that said, uh, I don't want to dismiss it. We, we have been prototyping interactive tiles for a long time. Um, we, there are things in interaction that are really the hard problem. Like, you know, we, we can't really add scrolling because we're a vertically scrolling start screen. Um, we've, we've prototyped a handful of things. In fact, I know that research uh, video leaked a couple years ago with like the kind of accordion thing. Um, we are working on it. Uh, we're just trying to get it right. Um, in that sense, what do you think about using, like, you know, you added all this new adaptive features to the, to the toasts and yes. buttons and stuff. What do you think about using that kind of like an interactive widget? Like that is kind of the goal. We, you know, toasts have actions. They, you know, the, toasts have actions and they have adaptive. Why wouldn't actions work on tiles is a, is a fair question to ask if I had to put words in your mouth. <laughs> no, no, I mean, like, you think it's a valid use case to use that kind of in the same way? Yes, like, we do. Does it dismiss if I like click a button? Or it doesn't it have to. We would leave that up to you. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's good. We, yeah. So we're, we're, it's something we're certainly exploring. Thank you. Yeah. For the notifications listener platform, um, exactly how are we going to go about requesting those permissions? Is it something you can deny for the app not to access just the notifications, or do you have to deny the entire app's permissions? 
you, so there is a settings page under privacy for notifications access. Every app that has permission to the notification listener is in right. there. The user okay. can toggle that, that, that off, and, but and it is for the whole thing. And you pipeline. can't, for instance, say, I don't want any apps to access WhatsApp messages as a Correct. case of, so can I, Correct. but is that for each, again, every app then can't uh, access WhatsApp, or is that saying this app can't You cannot access? block an app. You can only block your whole notifications pipeline. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Hi. There was a build my pin site uh, website yeah. for 8.1. Yeah. Will that yeah. ever come back for 10 with some of the newer options for RSS? I think and it still works. So the polling, that was basically you could put a polling URI yeah. in, in your, in basically in your meta tags in, of your website, and you would pin a site, um, and, and it would be a live tile. Will that ever grow or be expanded for websites to have more options? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. We don't have any plans to right now. Is that something you're currently using I, to take advantage of? I'd like to take advantage of it more, yeah. Okay. That's, that's really good feedback. Um, I think we announced yesterday that we are going to, uh, Andrew on our team is actually going to be corralling a lot of the feedback um, for, for various areas. So yeah, if you, if you have feedback on that, you can shoot us an email to, um, or even just talk to him and he'll, he'll, actually, I don't know, yeah, he can just give you his email address. Cool, thank you. Thank you. Um, hi, Matt. Uh, hi. The anniversary update will ship in August, I presume. Uh, Xbox is also getting the update. Uh, based on that, would the mobile also get an update around the same time with the features? I actually have not even just PRs. <laughs> I have no visibility into when things go out. We well, just write the code and the demos, and then they start working someday. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, sorry. Uh, for for anniversary update on Xbox, we know that adaptive toast notifications and uh, uh, the several features that we've talked about here, image, all those visual updates are coming as part of the Xbox update. Oh, no, no, I, m I just meant that would it be available across the entire set of devices, or would we then need to cater for the fact that it's not going to be on mobile until a later date, et cetera? So you want to be able to target the entire set rather than a specific set? Yes, so it is, it is an issue that the, the adaptive features, you know, we, we want them, we're an XML API, not a WinRT API, so a lot of the API information stuff, like you can see as a contract present, uh, we, we certainly want to address that because we understand that these shells and these UI services in this new world will come in at different times. We're this base platform, but it is ultimately up to those devices, devices to paint the pixels. Yeah. Um, so it is something we're, we're, we're hoping to address by basically every platform will support the adaptive notification version and we'll have our own kind of versioning syntax so you'll know what features are supported. Okay. Uh, cool. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Do you toast the notification since now we're seeing them on uh, desktop and mobile and Xbox now, will we see them in the HoloLens coming soon? Uh, that's up to them. Um, we. We want them. Uh, it is, it's, a, it's an experience thing. So it's, Toast notifications in particular are something that they're, they're just trying to figure out what's the best experience for it. Um, they did have at some point, I think even in a real version, and I'm not sure the current state of it, they had 3D live tiles that were really quite cool. There were tiles you could pin into your world and they had a 3D experience. Um, I'm not sure if those were were released, but we're working very closely with them and, and all of our shell partners. I mean, we're, we're, the, we're the one core, and we're working closely with all of them to get these features uh, everywhere in a timely manner. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I had a question about, like, on the phone screen there, you got the, the lock screen badging. Do you expect any kind of updates to that, like, in um, the future? The lock screen badging, like, in particular, are you... Well, like, you know, you see them at the bottom there. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm wondering if they can be actionable. Like, I, I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, unfortunately, that's not really our area. I'm not oh. sure what, um, they, what they have planned for, for lock screen at this point. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I, I don't know. OK. Sorry. What time are we at, Lay? Sorry. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, that one's dead? Oh, we have a minute left. OK, we have cool. a minute left. Sorry, I don't, is that Microsoft microphone turn off? With the uh, notification visualizer, uh -huh. you know, the, uh, you create an XML. What's the best way to handle that XML when you're doing adaptive tiles? Uh, you know, where to keep that, how to actually load it, where to, you know, if you want to replace certain elements of it. 
Yeah, um, you know, currently, I, I personally revert back to just string concatenation and the string interpolation, so. Yeah, so you just do like string format, but you keep like in a resource file or something? Yeah, or? so string that format, if you saw that like dollar sign, and if you're yep. in a C Sharp 6 app, you can preface the string with a dollar sign, yep. and then you can use curly braces, so you don't have to use like string format. You can put the variable in line with it, it's a little cleaner. Okay. Um, so it's a little better, but yeah, actually now that you kind of bring that up, it would be kind of cool if we had like an export to, a, uh, to the notifications extensions. Something as a, a feature request. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because ideally you do want to use notifications extensions. It's that object oriented. It'll make sure the XML is valid and it'll also escape your characters. Did you, yeah, so go ahead. Come on. You, you can go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Does this work? Oh. Yes. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've, I've seemed to be under the impression that. A Win32 app needs to be converted to Centennial to throw a toast because I could have sworn when Windows 8 came out, I was able to have a Win32 app. Throw yeah, correct. You can yeah. that. Yeah. Win32 apps were able to uh, send a toast notifications by doing some tricks. Yeah, some trick so, like the installer yeah, exactly. has to create a shortcut with For the Centennial app. apps, the gain is that after you convert your Win32 app into a, a Project Centennial app or a desktop modern app, you don't really have to go through those tricks to, uh, for example, add a, uh, have to create a fake shortcut inside yeah. which you have to give a fake app identity because Centennial helps you with all that. And also, if you want to deal with toast notification, you don't really have to write your own com activator, which actually is quite complicated. It gets and, uh, a lot easier. Oh, okay. It gets a lot yeah. easier. Yeah. It used to be possible, but it was a lot harder. But how about those new toast features like the, the ones that go before the uh, anniversary app? Um, app? Yeah, I think those would all work. Will that be avail avail still available for the non for, for the those those uh those features like adaptive toast will all work for uh, when, a project. The plain Win32 well. without the project. They will. So visualize if it's a visual feature, it'll mostly work with the existing Win32 apps as well because okay. we only interpret the payload. We don't care about the source. Okay, good. Thank you. No yeah, thank you. So we are a couple minutes over. Uh, thank you everyone for coming. We hope you had a good build. Uh, everyone get safe home. And thanks, we'll see you next year. Thank you.